need you guys to see the work on today. Don't worry about looking at it right now. Uh, we work on it in a few seconds. Side, please.
Let's look over these. Okay. So these should be somewhat of a review of what we did kind of yesterday. Can anybody, can either one of you explain to me what, what do I need to do in order to solve this linear function here? Bring 4x down and then bring the 2 down. Bring 4x down and the 2 down. What do you mean by that? Bring 4 down and put the bring 2 and 2. Okay, so you say saying plug the 2 in for x. Yeah. Yeah. Like so? Yeah, 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 yeah. How do you have it on your paper? Tell me what you got on your paper. I have 4x and this is 2 and minus 5. Okay, now talk me through how you solve that. 4 times 2. 4 times 2. So you did this, okay? What did you do with the x? So did you move the x anywhere or you just say it minus five? Right here? Yeah. Which is essentially what you're supposed to do, okay? And just get three, correct? Yeah. Now, I'll tell you why you should do it a little differently. So we won't get confused about it, okay? So if I had, if I'm doing 4x parentheses 2 minus 5, right now this is not telling me to do 4 times 2, which you remember that's what we're supposed to do anyway. So it's not bad, but initially, the way it should look is we'll take this 2, I mean, we'll take that x away. Okay, because we're saying it says f of x equals 4x minus 5, and then it says find f of 2. So, what we're doing here is we're saying when we see x, we're going to plug a 2 in for x. So, if we're plugging something in, it gets rid of the actual variable here, which, like I said, you solved it the correct way, but if you get confused by that, you might say 8x, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because the x is still there. Okay. But just be careful. All right. So three is the correct answer. So you got the right answer, but just make sure you're not missing no steps. Yeah. All right. Please. You want to do the next one? All right. What did you do? Three plus five. There we go. See, it's negative three, just like that. Positive or negative fifteen. Okay. Okay, so what did you get for your answer? Negative 12. Okay. I thought I saw you get that on your paper. Yeah. yeah. I was like, it's just probably you probably wrote it a little different. You got the next step. Gotcha. All right. So I'm actually kind of following through this one with you. Okay. So we got negative six x minus ten, and it says f of negative seven. So what am I going to do with the negative seven? Either one of you. Put it in 
parentheses right here beside it where we had x, right? Okay. Um, close parentheses, minus 10. And then anybody can tell me what negative, a negative time a negative give you positive. Good. So negative six times negative seven gives me what? 42, a positive 42. What would I do with the minus 10? Bring it down, good job. 42 minus 10? 32. 32, good. So it seems like we're getting that pretty well, right? Now we're just gonna add another little dimension onto it today. So, those sheets that I handed you while you're doing your bell ring, pull those out, please. Or put them in front of you where I did, I took you to them. Get all my devices turned on. So we're going to do, we had add a little twist to it, okay? It's a small twist, but it's simply just like what we've been doing as well, all right? So basically, it just told you straight up what X was, right? That's what I've been telling you. But today, it's just going to say the domain, okay? Which we've talked, we talked and talked and talked about in terms of order pairs, which is our domain and which is our range. So in an order pair, I have an X and a Y, right? Which one is my domain? The X or the Y? X. X. Good. So the paper says here, it says write the range of each function. For the given domain, okay. But number one here says f of x equals three plus two x, okay. So if we know that the domain is our x value, then we have a list of domains right here. What do we think we're going to do with these numbers that's in these brackets? Uh -huh. The X, right, right. We're going to replace it with the X. And simply just do it with just doing for our bearing. We're just going to plug it right back in here. Okay, so for each value, we're just going to plug it in. So I'm going to work these out on a separate sheet of paper. And feel free to work yours out on the back of the paper. Um, So I have some right here. You probably want to work me back on another sheet because I know you're going to run out of room. So it says F of X to plug all of them. And I'm going to do, I'm going to do all of them on the first one. Okay. Three plus two X. It says domain negative 13, negative 3, 6, 10, 13, 18. Okay. So I'm simply just going to write the linear function here now 3 plus 2, and I'm going to plug in a negative 13. All right. So I'm gonna do a little bit of math in my head here. All right, guys. Can, and when you when you're trying to do this, you can type this in a calculator just like that. You don't have to do two times negative thirteen and then hit enter and then do plus three. Okay, you can simply say three plus two parentheses negative thirteen close parentheses and you get your answer. Okay, so. If you type it in from left to right like this, you should get negative 26. And then my answer should be negative 23. OK? 
Okay. So that should be my first value that I write in here. So go ahead and write negative 23 down in here. Okay. So then I have three plus two parentheses negative three. Well, three just comes straight down and I got negative six. So three plus negative six should give me negative three. Write that in there. It's going to be a lot of work. It is. It is. And, and the key to it is just practice, 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 practice. As much as you practice this stuff, the easier it get to come to you. Okay. So, um, I saw it. Right. I'm not going to trust me on the test or quiz. You probably won't have nearly this much because I want you to have time to be able to go back and check your work and stuff. But, and like right here, I'll stop at 10 just because um, they get two negatives and two positives. Okay. All right. So, three plus two. Then we'll plug in the six for X there. I got three plus 12 equals 15. We're going to write 15 in here. I'm going to do one more. I got three plus two parentheses 10. Okay. Then we've got three plus 20 because two times 10 is 20. So I get 23. Now, if you go back to your original sheet here, I'm going to talk to you about what is the action trying to be displayed. Okay. So we said the domain is our X and the range is our Y. So if I were to put these in order pairs and show you what it would look like. It'll be negative 13, negative 23. That'll be one set of order pairs. Okay. My domain, it says negative 13, so I put it in for X. And then my range was my Y. Boom. All right. And the next set will look like negative 3, negative 3. Okay. X for my domain here. And then Y from our range here. Okay. Now, in terms of the graph, I'm tell, tell you how this kind of corresponds with the graph here. I'm going to pull this up real quick. Okay. Say we were working on an important plane and we were trying to graph these. Um, All right, so say we had a, a coordinate plane and we wanted to graph these points, okay? Because essentially that's what it is. All right, so I'm just going to use one of the smaller ones here. We got domain is negative three and we said our range is negative three, okay? So what that is telling you in terms of the graph, the domain is my X. So I'm moving from left to right, right? So which way would my Y be moving? Well, we said that the domain is left to right. So my range would be up and down, okay? So if the domain is negative three, that means I'm gonna go left, one, two, three. Probably make that a little wider. So if I'm going left, 
one through, I mean, to three, which way do I have to go for my ranks? Up or down? Three. For negative three. Down. So I'm gonna go down one, two, three. Okay. And, and what this is saying is at negative three, negative three, I'm gonna plot a point. That would be a point. Okay. So for the next one, let's just say yes. Yes. So for the next one, let's just say we were trying to plot that, Trevor. Okay, so what would my next point be? According to how we put them in order pairs, right? According to how we put them in order pairs, too, what would be my next point? We said negative 13 and 20, negative 23 went together, negative three, and then negative three went together. So what would my next point be? The domain is at my x, and it goes to x, y, what will be my next point based off the portion we have this here. Yeah. Okay. No, 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 no. So I'm just I'm checking them out the list here, right? I already done negative 13, I already done negative three. So what's next? Six, okay. And which one of these points down here that we found for range, which one of these values that we found for range on your paper goes with six? Six and fifteen. Okay. Yeah. So six and fifteen. Six. 15. So if I wanted to plot that, how would I plot 6 and 15? Am I going to go to the right or to the left? You go right, 6 and 15. Okay. Why is that? Because it's positive. So you said go to the right, 6. Go how many up? 15. Are you sure? Yeah. Positive? Yeah. Okay. But you are correct. Just want to make sure that you're sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You need five more points. Stay out and squeeze five more points in here. Yeah. One, two, three, four, and Five. All right. And so say go over six and up 15. So my next point will be here. Okay, so you see how with this list we can have a wide range of points on this graph. They can go a million different ways. All right. So I just want you to see how it corresponds with us finding these values, how it corresponds. So according to put them on the quarter plan. Okay. All right. So Let's look at number Let's look at number nine. Go to number nine. All right. So talk me through how I will set this up. How will I start out with plugging these in? Negative four. 
minus three. What goes in right here? Negative seventeen. So I'm gonna do this math in my head again. Eight two. This would be sixty eight minus three, which is sixty five. Okay. All right. Set the next one up for me. Minus three, good. So negative four times negative 16 gives me what? Sixty four minus three gives me sixty one, good. Good, 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 good job. So I'm gonna stop there and I'm gonna let you do try number six. Try number six it's on your own. Do the first three. So do negative 18, negative 10, and negative nine. We were looking at number nine. No scratch it, that's all right. Number six. Do the first three. So negative eighteen. Negative 10 and negative 9. Uh, good. She's almost finished. Are you still going? It's here. Now, I want you to tell, tell each other what you got for the first term that you should have for your rank. Negative nine, okay, we're good with negative nine. Let's see, negative 18 plus nine, that's negative nine, good. What about the second? Negative what? Negative one, you got negative one too? Okay, let's see. You got negative 10 plus nine? Yes, that's negative one. What about the third term? We both got zero. What'd you do? How'd you do it? Negative nine. 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 Negative 
remember, you can type these in the calculator from left to right, that's how they are. Just put in the, the value. What you You done? Should I slide my chair over there? Should I get it? I get it. You done too? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Is that 